Okay. All right, so next part here, we're going to go into show positioning. And uh, I kind of already talked about this a little bit here, but um, a little while ago, I created a uh, post and I said, we're no longer in the information age alone. We're in the attention age where the loudest, not the best, is likely to get paid the most. Okay. This goes back to what I was talking about yesterday as well. Y'all know somebody who's worse than you, but making more than you? A lot of times they're just making more noise. That's it. Just more noise. And <clears throat> this, is, this is part of that though. Um, you got to get used to, uh, a marketer is a noise generator, right? Um, anyway, market positioning is how people fit you into what they already know. We kind of went through that yesterday as well. But I want to show you guys three things, three little tricks to position your show in order that you're loud. Okay? Because I want to teach you a very powerful thing here. Creating noise is much more challenging than simply aligning with where noise already is. And when you think about messaging and marketing in that way, it actually gets really easy to push shows and messages and sales messages out to these really cool areas. Um, classic example of this uh, from my past. When I was, uh, so I, I went through basic training. I know it tells a lot of army stories, but it was part of my life for a little while. And I learned a lot of great lessons about myself. And um, I went through basic training and I was what's called an ammunition specialist. So we dealt with all ammo except nukes, okay? And, um, uh, when I came out of basic and went through my, uh, it's called AIT training, your advanced individual training, um, I went back into ROTC to finish college to become an officer. And that's the route I took. Um, and because uh, I know there's a few of the military people in here and they usually people ask. So that's the route I took, right? Green to gold and um, that route. And as I started going in to become an officer, one of the semesters they had you go through, the only thing we did was study wars. It's really cool. And if you've never seen the way like a lot of battle strategies are, they look like football plays. Okay, first someone's gonna move here and take the option. You know what I mean? That's how it looks though. In infantry to infantry, like combat strategy stuff, you'll draw out the lines. Here's the enemy line, here's where they are. They have this machine gun nest there, this machine gun nest there. Create a decoy around here, move this way. Like it's, it's that kind of strategy stuff. It's really quite interesting. And um, in fact, some of the things I do with marketing is kind of that way. Um, and kind of comes from that. But this whole semester, all we did was study wars. Why they started, right? Why they ended. Um, what was happening in the middle of that? Who moved against what and what maneuvers to get around these different you know, uh, land features and such. And it's really interesting stuff. And is anyone in here like a historian? Okay, good. Whew. Because every time I tell a story, there's always someone who walks up and they're like, well, did you read this specific paragraph from so-and-so's journal back when it was buried in the Dead Sea? It's like, no, I didn't, all right? <laughs> Understand the principle of what I'm about to share with you, okay? We had this guy come in and all he did was teach, like I said, these battles. And he, I called him historian professor dude. <laughs> Super smart guy. And he, we started studying the American Revolution deeply. In order to understand a war, you really have to go into politics and you really have to go into, funny enough, like marketing and business, what was being influenced over there. You have to go into a lot of culture things. You can't just study the battle. So we started just studying very deeply, a lot of American Revolution, very deeply Civil War. And we started and progressively going through all these very deep battles throughout. And we'd spend six to eight hours a day studying war <laughs> and uh, for a long time. And at the end of, of the semester, he said something really interesting to me, and I've taken this, and it's one of the reasons this has happened. He said, if you look at this, he said the American Revolution did not start at all because of religious freedom, religious oppression, like we often romanticize about history. It started because of rights, right? It, started, it never starts because of a social issue. Wars do not start because of social issues. They always start because of, of conflict in rights. Civil War had nothing to do with slavery until like the last little bit, right? It had nothing to do with it, okay? He said, you have to understand that there are rights and then there are social issues and wars don't start over social issues. They always start over rights. I was like, huh. And we started going back, we started realizing like, oh my gosh, that pattern's all over the place. And um, I started realizing that this was a major opportunity for a direct response marketer. Um, uh, historian professor guy, okay? <laughs> and so I started realizing that there's a huge positioning hack we all can play with this. And this is very easy to use inside of content, inside of a show. Uh, very, very powerful material on this part. Um, this is one of my favorite, anyway. Align with a social issue that already has momentum. Like that. 
Did I create socialism versus capitalism? Not at all, but I did align with it. Okay, I took a stance on an existing social issue, and because of that, a lot of both flack, but a ton of people who also believe the same now follow me because of it. Okay, one of the greatest things you'll ever do is find a social issue that you are passionate about and go align with it and take a stance. Now, because there's already so much noise and uh, momentum behind that, you will ride that wave. It's the other part of riding. So like there's a red ocean, right? You can ride the red ocean waves that guys like Russell is making when he goes and launches something. We also can do this in just general society, right? Where is the noise already? Harder to create it, easier to align with it. Where's the noise already? Like, uh, um, so capitalism versus socialism, right? Every, people talk about that all the time. And so that's why we did it. Capitalist pig. The only reason why Ryan Moran put this shirt on in his interview with Gary V and sent me a picture of it. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Crazy. We had no idea it was happening. I was like, oh my gosh, what? And then Russell sent it over. I was like, oh, what the heck? Like, this is amazing. And people are like, where's that shirt? Where'd you get that shirt? In fact, John, yesterday, you know, uh, while we were walking out, uh, we have a hotel room here for me, even though I'm not staying here, just so I can decompress at certain points. And um, we were walking on over there. Yeah, it's something I need, personally. So um, we are walking on over there, and this lady who's not part of this event at all, not here for Fun Like Live, knows nothing of our world, she literally stopped John like this. Said, Wait a second. <laughs> oh, hold on, hold on. And he kept walking, because he was trying to get me some. <laughs> and he kept walking, and she stopped him physically and said, I love your shirt! Where did you get that? And I was like, capitalismswag.com, oh, mic drop, right? And she was, yeah, he was wearing the one that says socialism sedates society. That's me aligning with an existing social issue, right? Pretty hard, right? And um, anyway, I get, a lot of, um, I get a lot of Americans loving capitalist pig. I get a ton of international people hating my, my socialism comments. They just, they hate it. You Americans think you know what socialism is. It's like, well, I know what capitalism is. I know it's not that. <laughs> okay. okay. One key thing that I make here, though, a very key point, I've made the decision to never, ever get political in any of my messaging. Okay. So I can align with a social issue, but never, I, that's a personal call. Um, Josh Forty makes a very strong statement politically right now. He comes out, he said, this is what I believe politically. I made it a part of my positioning and part of my, I actively do not talk about my views on politics. The closest I ever got was this, <laughs> right? That, make affiliates great again, <laughs> that rode the line pretty hard, okay? And, <laughs> I wasn't trying to make a statement. I didn't say I love him. I didn't say I hate him. I didn't say anything else. But the fact I had the freaking toupee, okay? I had people responding to me saying, I know what kind of individual you are. You said his name. You are therefore part of the devil's team. And I was like, unsubscribe. <laughs> I was like, all right. But, but uh, um, that, this is, anyway. It worked quite well. We have had a lot of noise get passed around because I'm writing a social issue. Uh, when you launch a funnel and nothing happens to it, usually it's a messaging and a positioning issue. And uh, one of the easiest ways to get a lot of content, uh, sorry, a lot of material and people and noise your way is to align with a social issue. How many people do you think get just sent this link because they think it's hilarious? A ton. I didn't do that. I didn't generate it. I didn't go buy the lead. I didn't do any of that stuff. The noise that's already out there, the social issue is what has helped bring in that opinion. So I don't care, again, like I don't, I don't make stances on, well, this is who I love in politics, this is back and forth. That's where I draw the line. I don't do any of that in my marketing. Um, but at the time when we launched this, June 2019, a lot of impeachment kind of flack started for, for Mr. Trump there. So we rode the noise. And that's, that's why I did that. We went, when we were in, uh, when I was speaking at Carnegie Hall, um, Trump Tower is there. So we went and we got Make America Great Again, and I, I, I put, we crossed it out and put affiliates and went into Trump Tower and filmed a bunch of ads for this. It's hilarious. And all the Secret Services there with their M16s just like, look at this. So nice. Anyway, oh man, we did some crazy crap on that trip. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's me doing that though, is a lot. Does this make sense, this principle? Okay, because you got to create noise. Most offers don't work because there's a lack in sales noise. So you got to create the noise or it's easier just to align with it. Do both. 
But when you go out, and one, one of the easiest ways to do this is to align with uh, a social issue. That's the whole point I'm trying to say with this. A show is no different. A show is no different when you're positioning a show. Content is polarity. Actually, don't try to create, I've had people reach back out and say like, I can't believe you're trying to cause a riff. You're trying to cause polarity. I'm like, it's already there. I'm just making a stance on what side I feel like I'm on for certain social issues, right? And uh, um, riding the noise. Um, I have a few buddies who have become multi-millionaires by selling different um, Trump hats and paraphernalia. He didn't create that noise. He's just riding it, right? Same thing. Very powerful as a marketer to understand this, okay? Easier to align with where it is. Okay, so first, that's the first part there, align with, so, uh, with a social issue. Does that, does that help? It's like a huge hack, okay? Yeah. <coughs> All righty. Um, second part here. Uh, guys, treat the show like a product. Just like I would with an offer, create a who, market problems, all, all that stuff. I do the same thing, especially those first three, okay? You'll find in my intros, I'm saying, hey, I'm Steve Larson. I've spent the last four years doing blah, right? And I'm going to go do this, and I'm calling my shot. Um, if you are A, calling out my who, right? And you want to follow me, and you're having an issue with calling out the core problem, that's what I'm doing inside the intro, is I'm really calling out a lot of these three things. And the show title is meant for the market. So it's no different uh, than the, the content. You need, to cre- you need to treat the show like a product, is what I'm saying. Okay, um, what is the who of Sales Funnel Radio? Mm, that's the market. Who's the who? A funnel builder, a who, online market, absolutely. What's the core problem that I'm trying to solve in there? Yeah, crappy offers, and I'm trying to say in there too, things like, follow my journey so you don't have to go through the junk that I do, right? <clears throat> which makes a very compelling reason to listen, which is why I don't need to be at my end result in order to start publishing. Okay, follow my journey. So I'm not there yet. Follow my path as I go to the first million dollars without VC funding or debt, completely from scratch. You know the sale flow intro? That's what I'm doing. That's why that works. Because um, um, now there's a huge benefit to the listener. Um, secret MLM Max Radio. It's actually the exact same top three. It's just now for MLM, but the same market. I don't serve the MLM market. I actually serve the ClickFunnels market where MLMers came in. Very different, very key different uh, difference. Uh, the who on this one, which should be launching this week. Actually, only ClickFunnels users, especially new ones. It's, the whole thing is a sales letter. It's just tons of stories. It's awesome. Um, but it doesn't feel like that. It's not a one funnel away promo at all. What I did is I went and I, uh, there's a show on Amazon Prime right now called Self Made. They just go interview entrepreneurs on their journey. That's basically what that is. It's not like everyone should take one funnel away. It's stories of all the junk people. Like I went through 34 tries. Well, we go through those, the equivalent of that and other people. It's really a uh, fun show. Uh, what about uh, this one? The who? There we go, entrepreneurs. A little bit general, and the market actually is also entrepreneurs. Core problems, man, how do we make profit? Right, that's what I'm trying to solve in that one. <coughs> so you treat your show like a profit. Uh, sorry, I saw the profit. <laughs> um, when you treat your show like a product, I'm also trying to go in and do the same things in a sales letter. Um, I'm actually trying to do that also in my show. So for example, if I'm going to my market to figure out, you guys remember Dose? Dopamine, the chemical of distraction, and the feel goods there. The easiest way to create dopamine in your new market and everything that you're creating is consistency with the content you create. Oh, another new episode. Oh, another new episode. It's a hit. Statistically, we all check our phones 72 times a day now because Zuckerberg uh, literally hired addiction specialists to come and engineer addiction into Facebook. And there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's interviews about that where he's talking about that, right? And, um, I'm not saying it's good or bad. Wouldn't it be awesome if people were addicted to you, right? Uh, but good or bad, it happened, okay? And part of the result of that is we get dopamine hits. It's the easiest chemical to get, which is why it's the easiest one to go for out of the four. Easiest one to go and, and uh, produce in someone is by consistently creating that new content. And that, that's a huge hack to that. Oxytocin, chemical of connection, right? Easiest way to create that from the market you serve into your new opportunity and the people in there uh, is just vulnerability. Like I've done with you guys, be, right, if, I'm, if I'm, again, trying to get reminded how cool I am, like that's, that's not going to serve anybody. 
but by me turning around and saying, here's the scars, right, and, and publishing a lot of those things, like, I know you guys probably wouldn't follow me if I didn't talk about the first 34 tries, right, or if I didn't tell a story of how I couldn't feed my wife, or how I asked my dad for money, and he said no, right, <laughs> like, because I've shared that part of my life, like, you have that stuff too. And a lot of times people will say, I don't have any stories like that. I've just learned how to tell them in an interesting way. You definitely have them. Okay. Vulnerability is a great way to go do that. Um, serotonin, easiest way to go do that uh, is, is interaction, is interacting because uh, serotonin is a chemical of status. That doesn't mean like, oh, look how great I am. Self-worth, right? That kind of status. Um, in fact, in the brain, right, the brain... Neurons, they don't touch. The ends are bathed in serotonin, right? That's the self-worth part. And those people who can't actually get uh, serotonin to stay around those par end parts of the brain, that's where anxiety and depression a lot of times comes from because the brain can't self-regulate that chemical in the neurons in the head, okay? Uh, call to action. So anyways, interaction back and forth with people. Like there's a reason I like to do the Q&A back and forth. When uh, Russell spoke at Offermind, he had never worn a t-shirt on stage. It was the first time he ever did, and he wore mine. It was really cool. He also had never stepped down and walked around. I like to do that, just the lights don't come in this room out. You know, like at Offer Mine, I like to walk around a lot. I know I walk around probably too much. But he had never done that part either. It's important for me to do that because it creates the interaction with, with people. People want to interact with you and let them. Um, I am not awesome at uh, communicating in social media. <laughs> you guys probably have noticed that. Anyone that messaged me and I did not respond? Yeah, a lot of hands. Okay. <laughs> that is not a personal thing. I just want you to know. I just, it's literally, no joke, thousands of unread Facebook Messenger messages. Just on that platform, I have 426 voxes right now. I can't get under 400. Every time I answer, they have babies, and there's like tons more of them. You know what I mean? So that's an issue, though. That's not anyone else. That's my problem. How do I solve it? I should probably get an assistant, right? <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So. I apologize for, for not responding, but we, we are solving that, and I'm excited because I want to keep, keep that interaction going. Your audience is going to want that from you. Uh, same with the last one, endorphins. Endorphins is the chemical of work reward. I have to, as an individual, put work in in order to get the feel goods back out. It's like running a mile, the first little bit sucks, and then you get kind of that runner's high. That's the response to damage that's happening in the body, and the body floods endorphins back in and uh, get you the feel goods. So one of the ways we go do that is in the shows, I will have call to actions. When you go there, you're actually getting an endorphin hit. It's not dopamine, it's not anything else. Uh, usually there's a little bit of other chemicals as well, but the primary there is endorphins, because uh, I'm getting you to work inside there with me and go do things. Um, has anyone ever gotten a task done and then wrote it down and then crossed it off immediately? Yes. Just so you could cross it off? Yeah. You're an endorphin junkie, okay? <laughs> That's what that is, is you are looking to see I still want the hit of having progress and work reward. You want the reward. So I'm going to write it down even though I've already done it and then cross it off immediately. That's actually where that comes from is for that, for that uh, one right there. These same things happen inside of content and uh, the interaction. Now, usually when I teach this, I usually get people saying like, do you feel bad manipulating people's brains like that? No, you're already all creating these in your head right now, right? This is just how they work as I interact with the marketplace. Second thing, choose a market and who for your show. Go through and treat it like you would a product, okay? Now, this next part right here, um, you guys doing good? Yeah. Yeah. Helpful stuff? Yeah. I know I'm going fast. It's because I want to get you guys all the goods, okay? Alrighty, we are going to listen real fast to one of my intros. Um, could you click on the one in the far right, uh, Brent, just the, the circle there? Yeah. If you're like us, you've dreamt of building your own business empire and the freedom it can bring you. But today there's hidden traps on the path of entrepreneurship placed by Big Brother and the big brands. So now we're forced to answer hard questions like how do we grow a real company without taking on debt or giving away ownership? Or how can we get leads and buyers for our products when there's so much competition with deep pockets? Finally, those questions are answered and tens of thousands are taking the challenge to walk the new path of entrepreneurship. Follow this podcast while I ask about their shocking journey from failure to freedom. You can join them too by going to onefunnelaway.com. I'm your host, Steve J. Larson, and you're listening to One Funnel Away Stories. That's the new intro. Yeah? Like it? Thank like you. 
I'm very, very picky. In high school, I started doing a lot of sound editing. And so I make all my intros and my outros. And uh, that's not something I outsource. Now, if you're not nerdy, <laughs> go outsource it. <laughs> It takes me a while to go do these. I just, I'm very particular on the way I like them. Okay, but these intros are prime real estate for uh, positioning, right? Who did I, okay, first of all, who, what, who's the who? We talked about it being a ClickFunnels user. What's the market? Okay, ClickFunnels, what's the market positioning? Did you hear it? What did I throw rocks at? Big Brother and the Big Brands. I like alliterations in those, right? Big Brother and the Big Brands. Um, uh, what's the new opportunity for them, the listener? I know you heard it once. I said, uh, uh, um, um, follow their journey as they walk the new path of entrepreneurship. So I'm throwing rocks. What did that do? That confirms suspicions, like we talked about yesterday, that there is an old path. To walk the new path. Oh, crap, my own old one. Okay. That's uh, some of those feelings we put in. So it's a script that I just spent a lot of time writing. Um, let's, go for, let's go for one more. Uh, could you click on the one on the far left? I know a lot of you guys have heard the middle one. I just want you to see some more examples of this because podcast intros are amazing. Max Radio. This is part three of four of our modern MLM series, and I'm very excited for you guys to be here. Today, I want to show you guys a little bit more about how to be unique and stand out Sorry, amongst all the rest of your up and down line and the competition that they truly are. If you're like me, you know MLM is an amazing opportunity to grow a real asset for yourself. But you also see that there's huge issues starting to emerge. Like, why haven't big MLMs let tactics change in over 30 years? Or why have they been cutting commissions smaller and smaller? Or even, how dumb is it that old MLM rules say you'll get in trouble when you use the internet to grow your team? These are some of the blaring questions we all face today. This podcast will show you how real MLMers like us are waging war on the old dying methods. And we aren't cheating by only bugging uninterested family and friends. Follow this podcast while I expose the shocking methods I'm using to build my 10,000 person downline and get people begging to join my team daily. Here's to the new tactics without all those old rusty MLM shackles. My name is Steve Larson and welcome to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. Yeah. What's up guys? Hey, uh, excited you can for kill it. Sweet. Okay. What am I throwing rocks at for that one? The old ways, right? Now, I am competitive with that marketplace. The other one, I am complimentary. So I wanted to share with that so you guys could see. Okay, what, what are the questions that I called out in there? Why haven't they let tactics change in over 30 years? Why are you going to get in trouble for using the internet? Why are they cutting commissions smaller and smaller? You know what's funny? I don't know if people are really asking some of those things, but I'm making them think, <laughs> right? I'm making them think those questions. Now, I, obviously, people are asking those questions, but what's funny is um, uh, the power of a question is that when I ask it, you have to think about it, right? And if there's rocks I'm throwing at current vehicles in that marketplace, what better way to do it than have put a question? In the, they, may, they may have never thought about it in the past. Wait, yeah, why am I not using the internet? Like, oh, I'm about to throw rocks at the way you're being taught to do this because it's annoying for the rest of us, right? <laughs> right? Does that make sense? So I'm going in and whatever, if you're, comp if you're competitive with a marketplace and that's the position you're taking, write down all the things that are being taught and are believed by that market in order to have success and then use those immediately to throw rocks in the intro. Very, very powerful. I get a lot of tons of little guys in the MLM space. A lot of people are not big coming out and loving the podcast. And the exact opposite is true. If they're huge in that area, they usually hate me because they don't know how to do what I'm doing. And it throws rocks against the methods that they teach. So it causes a really, really big wake on that one. I love that intro though. So I usually like to go like, you notice in that one, I am um, actually in both the ones that we just heard, the music is very call to action war. Like, do, 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 it's like, it's like uh, grab your sword and shield. Here we go, baby. We're going to go fight against this industry. I do the same thing in the uh, One Fun Away Stories one because I'm trying to throw rocks at the old entrepreneur path, right? But the Sales Funnel Radio one is not really like that. It's more of just like, I'm going to call my shot, follow me on my journey. Um, and you notice, like, I don't have 10,000 people on my downline. So what did I say? Follow me on my journey while I go and I get 10,000 people on my downline. So if you're not actually at the thing that you want to go be at, you just say, follow me while I get there. 
super fun and interesting for people to listen to something like that. You're far more believable again as you go do it. Is that helpful to hear that? The script that I use in these is this. Okay, it's the title of Liberty Script from Expert Secrets. We actually wrote this script um, for Expert Secrets, the first, first version, um, while we were, it was one of the final parts that he and I were riffing on back and forth. And uh, it's super powerful. It's uh, identify the charismatic leader. Hi, my name is Steve Larson. Identify the movement. I'm part of a group of underground entrepreneurs. Or you hear Russell say this in his. Uh, my name is Russell Brunson. I'm part of a group of underground entrepreneurs you probably never heard of. We don't believe in taking money. We take a stand, right? Why are you different? We're going to go and we're going to make revenue without... Um, um, without VC funding uh, or any kind of like, um, we wrote, I mean, there's a lot of parts we wrote with that. Who are you collectively fighting against? That's where we got the big brands thing. I was like, I like big brands. So I went and I took that and put that into the OFA one. We are funnel hackers and these are our stories. All right, I said something kind of similar with that. Um, but that planting the flag thing right up front is huge. The only difference that I've really started doing with what this is, is I am putting a call to action in the intro 80% of people hear the first you know, few minutes of the episode, but if my outro is the only place where you're hearing a call to action, not as many people are hearing it. So we started putting intros in the very beginning. You notice I did that in the One Funnel Way Stories one. Uh, you can join them too at onefunnelway.com. Right? I put that right in there at the intro. I'll certainly have outros for sure, but I also want to be pitching them at the beginning as well. So. These, the way I run this machine now, well, I'll get that in there in a moment, but it's, it's not cheap, so I'm going to pitch people so I can recoup costs, right? Um, anyway, so that's the takeaways from this about show aligning. Align with a social issue, choose a market and a who, and treat it like you would a product or offer. And then in your intro, really take a stand, right? You're going to be boring and not fun to listen to if there's no uh, conflict, if there's no downs with your ups, if there's no kryptonite, okay? You've got to have that stuff. Any questions on show positioning? You guys are taking pictures. There you go. <laughs> is there a way to uh, translate that as opposed to doing it on a podcast and doing it on a blog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, every time I say podcast or whatever, like we'll talk about whatever your base platform is going to be, but this is for any content you produce. But do, do you, so if you're writing a blog and you do something like that, do you write it as a sidebar or something, or do you start your blog off with that kind of intro each time? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll put it at the top, or it could be the theme of the whole blog. Yeah. But this is the, meaning the, the, the principle itself. Actually, we'll get into show or episode flow in just a moment. But the same, it's actually how we do our blog also. We just take the episodes, we transcribe them, and we turn them into a blog post. But it still has the same themes inside of it. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Do we have access to the slides? Uh, no. No. Any others? Cool. All right, we'll keep going here.